an important step in assessing a risk is to consider how likely it is that the risk will occur. We might be thinking about our favourite sports team and wanting to know if they will win the next game. If their opponent is at the top of the league, then the probability that our team will win is low. However, if the opposing team is new to the game, then our team has a much higher chance. Sometimes this is called the sensitivity of the risk. Some projects, such as those needing high safety confidence, want to assess risks with detail and precision and will include statistical analysis that produces numerical values for risk probability. For our purposes here, we want to filter the important risks that require management attention from those that could cost more to manage than it would cost if they actually happened. Therefore, a scale of high, medium and low is sufficient to allow this filtering. The other component needed to assess risk is to consider how much damage would the risk do to the project. This is called the impact of the risk. Sometimes it is called the seriousness of the risk. We can create a matrix on which we can plot each risk depending upon the probability or sensitivity and the impact or seriousness of the risk. The impact of a risk can be quantified in terms of its effect on cost, time and performance in the project. Some risks may only affect project costs, such as risks due to changing currency exchange rates. Some risks might only affect the project schedule, such as unconfirmed delivery dates. A risk that can affect quality is the introduction of untested technology, though this can also affect time and cost. Here we have identified a risk, R1, that has high probability and different impacts for cost, time and performance. Risk has been assessed as high, cost, high for cost, indicating that if this risk occurs, there will be high impact to cost in relation to the total cost of the project. So if our total project budget is £1,000, then a high cost impact could affect project costs by about £200 or more. A medium impact would be in the region of £100, additional cost, and a low impact would be in the tens of pounds. In the PI matrix, we position the risk for R1 in relation to cost in the cell representing high probability, the top row, and high impact. The risk for time is rated as medium, so it sits in the cell for medium impact and still on the top row for high probability. For a project lasting a year, a high impact risk would introduce delays of about a month or more. A medium risk would delay the project by weeks and a low time impact delay would be days. In this example, the performance impact of risk R1 is low, so it's positioned in the low impact column with high probability. Judging the risk level for performance can be less clear because it depends upon the project. A high impact performance risk might reflect the project's inability to deliver a necessary requirement. A medium performance risk might be that some wanted features are affected and a low risk could be identified as some minor features cannot be completed. There are some organisations that insist that all risk is categorised as cost impact. Sometimes this can be calculated, but as a project manager, I need to know what aspect of the project is affected so that I can focus my response on budget, schedule or performance issues. 
perhaps a separate, less focused matrix might be produced to satisfy bean counters. Another risk, R2, here assessed as medium probability, has cost and performance identified as low risk. So these components are grouped together in the low impact medium probability cell. The medium time risk is plotted in the middle cell. We can see as more risks are added to the matrix, how the project is sensitive to specific risks and whether we need to be more concerned about time, cost and or performance. This is useful management information. For a large project with many identified risks, the matrix will become full and therefore confusing. Obviously, if we group time and cost and performance risks together, the number of pro plotted risks will be reduced to a third. I prefer the richness of information provided by separating the risk categories. The next step in prioritizing important risks that we need to actively manage is to see that risks are grouped within each cell of the matrix. Risks in the high-high cell are the most important and must be properly managed. In the low-low cell, these are risks that are not likely to happen and, even if they do, won't have much effect on the project. Therefore, we can allocate minimum management attention to these risks. What about the other cells? Which cells must we actively manage? Generally, we will manage the top three cells, high-high, high-medium, and medium-high. Risks can change status over time, so you will continue to monitor them in case one of these risks increases in status and moves into one of the priority cells. For the priority risks, we will actively develop mitigation plans that are designed to reduce risk status, pushing the risk into the lower levels of the matrix. If this is not possible, we will create contingency plans that provide alternative actions that will progress the project if the risk occurs. <laughs>